Asalaamu Alaikum everyone and welcome to another video. GPVWC, we are in FS2 and we're at Hungary. We're racing for Red Ven Racing, an actually championship winning car. We're filling in for Ruven Machete. And this is my hot lap at the Hungara Ring. So I thought I'd include this. Um, to be honest, I thought this video was going to start with the first lap. So this has caught me out. Either way, you break just before the curbing on the left. Second gear, you don't need to go down to first and don't use the curb on the exit off the corner because if you use that, it unsettles the car, you can't get on the power as early. Anyway, down into turn two, you can brake very late, you kind of have to work out your braking point every lap. Very early on the throttle so that the car understeers up, then completely flat through turn three. Now make your way up the hill. Turn four, you can take flat if you're good. I'm not, so a little left into the corner, just use the red and white curb, and then into turn five, third gear, flick it in, back on the power as early as possible and you can use all of the track on a corner exit. Now into this chicane there's a couple of things you can do, second gear or hold it in third. I decide to go into second, I think third's a bit quick, it's a bit of a mistake for me. Then into that left hand it use up the concrete curb on the apex and turn in nice and early for the right, use up all of the track, completely flat through this left, you don't need to pull the car to the right before it and then completely flat through this right hand. Again don't go fully up on the curb because it does slow the car down. Late braking after the curbing starts, second gear, use up a bit of the curb, use up all of the curb on the exit, pull it back to the right and drop it down into second gear. You can turn relatively early and then hold it in as tight as possible before getting back on the power. Bit of a moment with the rear end and then down into third gear for the final corner. Don't go into second on the power, maybe a bit too early, we could have held it tighter for a little bit longer. Open up the DRS and that is a 130.5 at the Hungara Ring. There's probably maybe another tenth in the lap but that's probably my best ever lap at Hungara Ring including practice so I can't really complain. Starting then from P11, uh, as I mentioned, filling in for Ruva Machete, who is the championship leader. So a bit of an honor, actually, to be in Red Ven Racing. So a massive thanks to Ruven for having me. Big thanks for Steven as well for doing a lot of practice with me, helping me with setups and helping me just get quicker at the circuit overall. So I was a bit sad that I couldn't make it into the top 10 to do them proud, but we've got a long race ahead of us. We've got two long races ahead of us, that being said. So we just wait for everyone to line up and we wait for the red lights to appear. If I can get two top 10 finishes, I will be very happy with that. But the lights are up, clutch on, full revs, drop the clutch and away we go. Mikhail Tomala gets a much better start than us on the inside and we get a fairly bad getaway. So we're gonna have to hold the car on the outside and at this point I think you know what I'm going to try to go around the outside of everyone so jump on the brakes maybe a little bit too early I think I could have held it uh, held on to the throttle for a bit longer but either way we don't drop any positions and we get uh, a decent run over the other Scuderia whatever it's called car Tumala's uh, teammate Koivinen I believe that is behind me or maybe it's Remco Dizu I'm not sure either way we give some space but not quite enough um, and we make contact sorry that was um, Sotoris uh, Hoggy Saitis, I think is his name. Um, I can't remember without seeing the name, but I don't know if I left enough room. I I mean, obviously me driving at the time, I think I did. I looked at it on the replay as there's a moment in front of us, a couple of cars going off, but I had a look on the replay and I left room, but when Sotoris went up onto the curb, it kind of unsettled his car and it made him understeer into me. So I probably should have left more room. Maybe he should have gone a bit slower over the curb. It's, it's racing, um, so I'm, I'm not too upset with that. It's probably my fault more more than his, but I think it's still in the realms of first lap racing incident. Sadly, we're down into 22nd, which is very annoying. Uh, we're right on the back of uh, Kenneth Singleton as we're drawing to the end of the opening laps. We've got Piotr Adamczyk in front of us, who is one of my rivals because uh, he's very annoyingly got a win in GPVWC Academy Series before me. Um, which rather annoyed me. Um, it was in the reverse grid race and I didn't catch up to him quickly enough. But we're closing in up onto Kenneth and you guys might have seen this clip from the intro into the video because it was my favourite move of the day. On the outside, nice and late onto the brakes and then we just go the long way round on a Kenneth. Very nice move and I, I was practically fist pumping when, when I pulled that move off in the middle of the race. Anyway, coming towards the end of lap two, We've caught up on to Ali Pollock and DRS not yet enabled. So we were just doing this the old flat fashion way with slipstream up the inside. Nice and easy does it looking for P20. But when we come out slipstream, Ali still has it. So we're going to have to do this the hard way on the brakes. 
and then we just use up all of the track on exit and uh, give Ali a squeeze. Uh, and that's it, that's job done. Now on lap four, Steven has a moment because there was a lag spike with someone, he ended up losing his entire front wing and I try to have a go on the outside of Piotr into a turn four. That doesn't work, so we've got to slot back in behind Adamczyk. I'm losing so much time here, I know that I'm at least half a second a lap quicker. And on lap five, I'm getting close. I have a think about sending it up the inside. Thankfully, I'm able to get the car stopped and I don't run it into the back of the GPVWC Academy car. So that's, that is very lucky. Uh, Scott Morris, oh sorry, Scott Sovic up ahead. He's in the other Academy car. He runs wide. That allows me to go up the inside. And now critically, this means that Piotr doesn't get DRS because you can see we're coming up to the end of lap six. So I'd been behind Piotr for a few laps, but because Piotr was getting DRS from the car ahead, I can overtake. I'll make a big mistake uh, on the entry into the penultimate corner, but Piotr loses the rear end on the exit, so it kind of brings me back into play, and I have DRS. So let's take a look at the closing speed, then once we open up the rear wing, you can kind of see my steering wheel vibrating a lot because of the lockups from, well, a couple of corners ago and the first lap incident, but around the outside, nice and late onto the brakes and we're able to get just back in front of Piotr before the lap draws to a or before we get into the corner now coming to the end of lap 10 what happens here all oh, this big incident quite a few cars going off we slow it down we make sure we don't run into anyone and with that we're up into p14 and it's the top 15 positions that give you points here in gp gpvwc gpvwc uh, Remco Dezu is going to head into the pits along with someone in front of him. So that's a couple of positions coming my way. So instead of being in 14th, we're going to be making our way up into P12, which is pretty much where we started. And remember, we had that uh, contact with Contaguris, um, who is in P10. We're currently in P12. So maybe if things had gone our way, we could have finished in P P10, P9 at the most. So we'll take P12 considering what happened, we got lucky not to get any front wing damage. So P12 then for Red Ven Racing, um, sadly for Steven he had um, his lag issue with, or someone else had a lag issue and lagged into him uh, and he finished outside of the points in what was a very important race for him and Red Ven Racing, he's been very unlucky this season. But with the reverse grid race we are starting in P3 which is very good for us because we've got Kenneth Singleton in front of us and Tommy Coeven in. Now, I know I'm much quicker than Kenneth. We, we made a very nice move on Kenneth before and there's Tommy as well. So, to be honest, if I can get ahead of them on the opening lap, I reckon I can win at the very least, get a podium. But I also want to take it safe and we get a weird lag spike. We get yeeted from behind. Nothing I can do about that. Um, sometimes that stuff just happens. Thankfully, though, I don't get any damage. There was a big incident, I took a look on the live stream and um, a couple of cars did die from that, so yeah, I don't know if it was a my end issue or someone else's issue, but there we go. Either way, we're still in P3 and we are close to Tommy and Kenneth and at this point I'm just thinking where am I going to get them? Maybe at the end of lap 1 I can have a go into T1, but Tommy runs wide and I'm just waiting for an opportunity to present itself and Tommy goes wide and I get a really good exit so I decide you know what I'm gonna go up the inside I'm all the way alongside into the chicane and Tommy runs wide and then he hits my rear end and we then collide with Tizano there's a big incident all around us and I had a look at the replay not my fault at all Koivinen went wide he went up onto the curb lost the rear end and hit my back end. Um, I don't know why he tried to hold it round the outside of me through the corner. It was just really, really silly from him. Um, and I think it's just the first lap, you want to win, you don't want to relinquish the position, especially after you make a, a stupid mistake, which is what he did in, in turn five. So yeah, it's racing, it happens. I was very upset at the time though. I kind of got over it a little bit now, but we're battling with Luke Mitchell and we actually hold it round the outside of Luke through the penultimate corner, which I was chuffed to bits with considering Luke is practically the championship leader or second in the championship behind Ruben Machete, the driver I'm replacing. So I really wanted to keep Luke behind me. I wanted to do my absolute utmost for Red Ven Racing. I cover the inside then into turn one. Luke gets a much better run. So again, I go defensive. Luke moves to the outside. You've got the other Alfa Sierra racing car of Riboli behind me. And this time Luke's going to go around my outside. And yeah, just... I wasn't late enough on the brakes and Luke takes full advantage of it 
And now we've got Riboli right behind us, but we get a nice turn from Luke, so we're able to cover the position. Then into turn one, the next lap, I completely missed my braking zone, and that's allowing Riboli to get a great exit on me. But I can have a go down the inside into turn two, and unlike with Luke, I go onto the brakes much later. I learned my lesson, and we're still side by side as we go to turn three. Make sure to leave more room than I did on lap one. Um, in race one and now we're side by side him heading up the hill and I was thinking oh crap this is going to end badly uh, I hold it side by side or I try to unsuccessfully so I made sure you know nice and early lift so that there was no issue and now you'll see that I turn off my DRS here that's because I want to let Denis Eschenko through Denis was the quickest guy in race one he won the race and he's not in the championship battle right now so uh, I was speaking with Steven at the time and we decided I'll let Denis through so he can try to catch up to Luke and catch up to the other guys to take points away from them in the championship and then one lap later that's my teammate Steven Lexo so lift off let him through because he is a lot quicker than me um, and he can try to clamber his way up through the field so we're in P8 and P9 um, considering I started P3 I would have wanted to be much higher up as on lap 7 of the race Denishashenko has lost his rear end out of P1 and has lost his front wing so that promotes me up into P8 and now I can try to close in onto Luca Tizzano and well ideally Steven Lex. I was in Steven Lex's DRS and trying to follow him but then um, got caught up behind Tizzano who's now going defensive as we're on the outside I try again very late on the brakes try to go around the outside Tizzano gives me the squeeze and I say well if you're going to squeeze me I'm going to go and use the runoff area and now I've got the inside heading into turn at two um, I think that's a fair move to be honest um, I think Tizzano's kind of in his right to squeeze me I was alongside, but he can do that if he wants, and um, if it was grass, I would have had to back out, but it's not, it's tarmac, so I use the runoff area, which I think is fair enough. Either way, starting in lap 17, I had held P7 for a while, I was keeping Josh downward at about a one second gap, but he was closing in by a tenth a lap, if that, um, and in the last few laps, he's really started closing in, got within a second, and this time around was within DRS, and I was just thinking, oh god, I need to defend this. There were, there were a few others catching in, like Scott Mitchell further back, and I was thinking I could let Josh through, try to stick with Josh, stay clear of Scott Mitchell, and I thought, nah, I'm going to defend this for all my life's worth, and I managed to defend Josh on that lap, and then coming on to the final lap, I knew just one lap more to defend from Josh, so I need to make sure he can't send me up the inside. He doesn't. He didn't get a good final sector on the previous lap, so it means I get to have a clean run into turn one, but Josh is close, he's got DRS, we are going to keep it defensive as uh, Josh could go around my outside, I break way too early and that means that Josh does have a look on my outside, I end up squeezing him because I didn't think he would be on my outside and I was just looking ahead, um, I mean now kind of watching this back I get the advantage of looking in my wing mirrors but dur during the race on that last lap I was not looking in my wing mirrors, I had a look before the corner, I saw he wasn't there and I thought right I'm going to take my line and then realized that Josh was right alongside me on exit once we we made that little bit of contact but at this point I'm ahead uh, I have a moment with my rear and I'm just thinking right just keep it on the circuit keep it on the circuit p7 is good we'll take it um considering I think um Menoclont and Tom Dillon were having a field day in the commentary box with with this battle on the last lap as well but we managed somehow managed to hold on to this um so P7 then for Red Ven Racing, could have been better, but this is my best FS2 result so far. Um, so yeah, big thanks to Ruben Machete and Stephen Lexo for having me in. Um, sadly, I couldn't do better for them, but I'll take it. Maybe next season, next year, when I might do a full season of FS2, we can do a bit better. But this is my last ever FS2 race because I've now done four races. So from now on, it will just be the Academy races so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, i'll be back for academy in a couple of weeks time but until then stay milky and it's not